The idea of otherworldly agents of good and evil influencing humans exists in nearly every culture throughout the world. Philosophers, religious scholars, and psychologists have long debated not only the existence of, but also the nature of these forces. Whether we think of light and dark forces in metaphysical terms, that is, out there somewhere, or psychological terms, there are light and dark forces of some kind, and respecting that is important. The majority of humans on Earth and throughout history believe that otherworldly beings are actually agents. They're doing things in this world, either directly to us or indirectly, and that they too are experiencing a battle or a struggle, and using us as humans, as agents, as proxies, if you will, to fight this battle. I think when you look at all the evidence of the UFO and the ancient astronaut evidence, you're going to find behind this the entities that were accused of causing the darkness, the war, the suffering, all of that, were by and large extraterrestrial entities. They called them the gods in Mesopotamia, uh, also in Egypt, and then that morphed into angels and forces of Satan. Today, we call them extraterrestrials, but it's really the same thing. Mount Helicon, central Greece, at the base of this mountain. Sixth century BC poet Hesiod claimed to have made contact with the Nine Muses, immortal daughters of the god Zeus, said to impart knowledge and art to humans. Hesiod composed poems under the guidance of these muses including what many consider his most important work, the Theogony, and the infamous story of Pandora's box. When the Titan Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans, Zeus wasn't happy about it. Zeus wanted revenge. So what he did was he commissioned Hephaestus to create Pandora, the first woman. So he gave Pandora a pithos, a jar, that contained all of the evils of the world we call it a box, but in Greek, it's a jar. And she's told, don't open this. And of course, she opens it up. And so all these evils are released into the world. These evil forces are sometimes embodied by demons. Sometimes those demons are gods. Sometimes they are hybrid mix of monsters and gods. But they are the forces of negative events in the world. Zeus wanted to counterbalance the fact that they had these good things that had been unfairly, in Zeus's opinion, given to humans. So it's an explanation that lays the existence of evil at the responsibility of the deities, of the gods. Might the story of Pandora's box be describing the release of negative beings upon the Earth by extraterrestrials, as ancient astronaut theorists propose? If we look into some of the Eastern legends, we come across beings like the Jinn, who could, on occasion, provide goodness and help, and on other occasions, were like demons and could provide all kinds of evil and all kinds of temptation. The Jinn are, are really of some alternative world but they're able to pass through gateways and come into our world to influence us. Is it possible that humans were not only the creation of extraterrestrial beings, but also one deliberately fashioned to possess attributes of both good and evil? And if so, are the forces of light and dark in an epic struggle to influence the path of mankind? The gods fashioned the body as a sort of prison that would trap the divine sparks or souls of the light beings in a human form. One begins to wonder if this dualistic or hybrid aspect of humanity is sort of like a game to these extraterrestrial gods. Let's conflict these humans. Let's put them on this planet. Let's see what happens. Humans are essentially hybrid beings. We are conflicted beings. Part of us is immaterial and light. The other part of us is material and dark. And it's that constant conflict between us that, that rules our lives and defines our civilization.